Funnily enough, Wilson's question about uh, Hololive is a perfect segue. Is it a perfect? I don't. Let's not use that. We have a Hololive thing in in the next. We're we're going to be talking about Hololive again. We're we're going to we're we're going to be talking about Hololive error. Like it's got to come up. We're not using your segue. We should use my segue. (laughs) We're wiping it. Jack, do not delete this. (laughs) For those of you who want a little more bite to your to your, your shorts, um, we're we're gonna be talking about short series. So uh, so here are your nominees for best short series of 2022. <laughs> <laughs> やれ、花かわれな。シャイニングビームだ。Your jury pick for short series is Pokatoon. And the public choice is for Miss Kobayashi's uh, Mini Dragon X. What am I even looking at at Miss Kobayashi's Mini Dragon? Is this That's a the, doll? Is this- no, it's a it's CG. But it's not how the short looks. Oh, okay. The short's completely. The short just looks like the normal series. Oh, it does. But the okay. there's a weird little intro segment that's just the CG Kobayashi or no, yeah, Toru. Mm. I don't know why. Do why? And that's like the only time that that CG happens. As far as I'm aware, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's it's from a first person perspective too. Honestly, it's, it's yeah. kind of horrifying to it's, watch. It's a little but... creepy. I thought the whole thing was going to be in that animation style, and it wasn't. No. It just cuts to the normal style. I mean, no yeah. wonder Kobayashi's like kind of hot and cold. It's probably what she experiences every day. Like, it, maybe you're Kobayashi, and, and on some anxiety. I would love to be Kobayashi, though. I don't, is that weird? That, no, that's fine. I would like to. You're like, valid. Become her. Oh, okay. Wait. Wait. Oh, wait. Never mind. No, but wait. My, is is everyone streaming? Is this okay? before uh, or after your hypnosis? Here, doing hypnosis on children. <laughs> yeah, on children. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of my hypnosis on children. Eighth, um, let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about short series. Uh, All right, short okay, series. Okay. Okay. Uh, when so we were just talking about short films. That that's like one self-contained like little nugget of like animation, right? So short mm-hmm. series. Um, I I think they have the capability to uh, be a little bit a little bit more fleshed out. They have continuity. They can they can progress something. Um, what, what are some considerations that short series have to take that maybe a full-length series does not? For anyone to answer. Uh, All those for I, the jurors. Yeah. Same here. Uh, yeah. I, so I would say, um, and this is a little bit of a deceptive question because not all of our nominees this year are multiple entries. Uh, I think at the very least, um, 
the Doki Chan special was a single episode, and Kobayashi's drag, Mini Dragon uh, EX is, I think, only, what, five minutes in total? Across uh, all five episodes, so... Yeah, I wanted to it's... bring something up. Gambare Doki Chan special uh, is actually 2021. 20, uh, yeah, so... we were, we were going to ask, yeah, we were both a little confused. Yeah. The, the way that eligibility works is that if it has to air... Um, b- after or before certain dates for it to be eligible, and then it also has to have subs. So, uh, a lot of the times with these kind of shorts, um, they're like bundled with like a Blu-ray or something, so it gets mm-hmm. released later, and it doesn't get translated or, or widely released until later. So that may be. Oh, uh, okay. I, I don't actually know if that's what happened here, but I, that would make the most sense. Yes, I, so, I, yeah, I doubt it was subbed in 2021. It's probably subbed uh, in 2022. Yeah, the short series. Yeah, the short series itself for Ganbare Doki-chan was a nominee last year, right? And mm-hmm. then the, I mean, they call it a special, but it it's really just a you know a, a little episode. five minute thing added on yeah. its own. It, yeah. It's not even as long as a normal episode of the series. One of the, is. It's one of the things of all time. Anyway, um, yeah, I think there's definitely a it's. It's there's a lot of it's a a short series kind of has a lot of the similar concerns to sort of a full length anime does, except you have you're playing with less runtime for each individual episode. And of course, for the overarching thing. So you have to be a lot more economical with your time. Uh, I think also it's kind I I kind of, you know, hinted at this before, but it's. Even within short series. It's a very diverse bucket. I mean, the the difference between something like, you know, three episodes of like 10 to 15 minute uh, stuff like Hisui and Snow is to the, you know, sort of one one to two minute, uh, you know, bite sized nuggets that you get out of Puri Puri Molkar is. So you're still playing with a very diverse and it's, it's the same sort of quandary that you have in short film where it's like, well, OK, this is all very different stuff. How do I assess these against one another? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty accurate. Yeah, I... the, another thing, too, by combining it with a short series is, and I mean, you, you kind of have this with short film as well, but it's a little, a little less pronounced because because there's so many music videos and short films, those sorts of things in general tend to go for, at the very least, uh, like a older demographic. But when you have something like short series, a lot of these are aimed at children. Um, and even ba- even removed from that, even if like, even disregarding the demographic from it, it's like, a, they're very different genres, very different, uh, uh, again, uh, trying to accomplish very different things. So, you know, if you were to just, yeah, ignoring the pool of it being as a short series, if you were trying to compare something like Pui Pui Molka to, um, like, fucking Kenda Master Ken, it's like, why would, <laughs> would you ever put those two things together in the same bucket, right? Like, just picking those two out uh, mm-hmm. uh, from the pool of nominees. Like, obviously, when it's all together, it makes sense as a short series. But that is something to consider. They can all just be wildly different. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I would definitely, say, I feel like we generally didn't really touch on demographics as, like, sort of a, a point in discussion, uh, in the jury discussion, because, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there's nothing, if, if a kid's, a kid's show uh, is perfectly capable of being just as good as anything that's directed at a more mature audience, I mean, Pokétoon, I think it's fair to say, is directed at younger audiences, but... It's our jury winner of the year because oh no no of course yeah absolutely phenomenal I mean you can you can see our write ups on the website for more on why it is just each episode is absolutely beautiful yeah, yeah. no I agree I'm not I'm not saying that like the fact that children's media should be like that they're, they're less or anything I just mean comparing them to its contemporaries especially in terms of content is more difficult because it's they're not in the same, you know, again, yeah. it's an apples and oranges thing. Right. But um, yeah, actually, I think that actually raises a really interesting point because you, you, you look at Poketune and you look at, say, the animus shorts, and they, so these are sort of like anthology series. So even within entries, we have a remarkable amount of diversity. So like with, po- with, with something like Poketune or the animus shorts, there's no overarching narrative. It's, mm-hmm. it's like 
an appended series of short films almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that just yeah, yeah. an entire other layer onto the problem of, well, this is such a diverse banquet of uh, good content. What um, drew you to Poketoon and what made it win out above all the others? I, I mean, I see that there's two Pokemon entries here. What, what I, you know, what, what makes it the better Pokemon? Uh, oh, that's just a question. Yeah. It, um, I think, and Mojave, feel free to jump in if I do not by any means intend to be hogging the discussion. But uh, I think with Poketoon, uh, one thing I think is that the anthology structure really get, made it such that, you know, everyone was going to find one of the Poketoon shorts that really clicked with them. Well, uh, so it's, um, is this like Star Wars Visions, but Pokemon? It's like. I actually never had the chance to watch Star Wars Visions, uh, well, but. So the, well, this episode, it, we but... follow apparently a Gengar meeting a Gengar in a dress. Or. <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil, but the Gengar short is one of the really strong ones. Uh, I, I mean, they're all, they're all yeah, quite good. Yeah, uh, Jaden and I only watched uh, that episode of Pokatoon, which I, I do plan on watching more. I and mean, I've actually already planned to watch it. I never got around to it. And then when I this came up, I was like, oh, I get to see what Pokatoon's about. Because I always right. really like the Pokemon short films, short series. Right. I, yeah, I think to expand further, one of the benefits is you get such a really interesting and diverse like so you have the Gengar short and it's not just that each is different narratively each feels very different like stylistically so mm -hmm. um the Magikarp short uh had a really strong emphasis on I its soundtrack and on interweaving that with the narrative and the soundtrack is absolutely gorgeous and the way that they you know fold that into the visuals and the animation is very elegantly done uh, so it's it's partly par i think part of it is it's it, it it's not just that it does one thing really well it's that it does a bunch of very different things uh well and uh I, another good example is there the uh the scraggy short at the very it's uh, or scrap if it's crafty or scrap it's crafty right what's an i i forget I, name that yes. pokemon. Pokemon? it's crafty yes, i think it's crafty it's, yes it's, it's crafty okay scrafty and it's Mimikyu. crafty uh, Scrafty, the Scrafty short is this really nice, like, homage, homage to, you know, kind of old school Looney Tune shorts, uh, that's very well animated. I think, uh, that, that, and to understand that's our last, um, our last, uh, piece of the, uh, the montage that the viewers just got to see. So, it's, I mean. I, I could gush about Pokeptoon until the sun uh, comes down. Uh, does do you have anything to add, Mahave? Yeah. So I think that why Pokeptoon finished above Hiswain Snow had a lot to do with the fact that, as you mentioned, Pokeptoon each each individual episode kind of had something different to offer. And so different jurors could go, okay, yeah, that really nails it for me. That one really does it for me. Um, you know, this one, stylistically, it works. This one, the OST works for me. And with Hiswain Snow, it depended a little bit more on whether the overall package landed for each individual juror. And it's also kind of... It's much more focused, and whether that narrative and message works for each individual um, is going to be a little bit more of a you know hit or miss thing compared to people being able to look at Pokey Tune and go, "Yup, this episode's got something for me." I think another thing too is this idea of um, like Nintendo's marketing of, towards Pokemon has shifted over the years. Um, obviously, the games are still about Pokemon battles, right? It's still about combat and everything. But the broader marketing, especially towards, um, especially towards like non gamers, I guess, especially towards like young adults, especially like young women and everything, is just this idea of like, oh, the Pokemon are cute and they can be your friends, you know? Like it's like the idea with like Piplup step. It's just the girls are Piplup and they just hang out. You know? I want a Pokemon to be my friend. Yeah, and I think there's an appeal in Poketoon where all of them are just kind of like, like 
the everyday, but this is Pokemon. Yeah, there was a there was yeah. a huge sort of like that's something I've always really like was charmed by by Pokemon was the in with even within the games the characters the like sort of just NPCs you find around like a town um, that just talk about like living with their Pokemon every day, right? Yeah, like oh, I got this you know you know water type Pokemon to help me fish, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, right. she, I, I, I go ahead. Oh. I was just going to add off of Mojave's point about uh, kind of the jury clicking really well. With I would like to just add that even with that in mind, because th- I feel like the diversity can be kind of a double edged sword. So you might say, OK, there's going to be something in here that I'm going to click with. But there might also be a bunch of stuff that I don't really click with. But I think Poketoon was able to maintain such a level of quality throughout that it threaded that needle such that. There, people may have had, you know, maybe one thing that, okay, this isn't as emotionally resonant, but I still recognize it's really well done. It does a good job of what it's doing. And in line with the overall product, this is, this still creates a really good anthology series. Uh, well, I did not mean to cut you off, Olson. No, you're fine. I was just going to say that it, uh, it's a really interesting point that I hadn't considered about how, you know, the, the shift in kind of direction of how to display Pokemon, what to focus on. Um, looking at this more kind of slice of life, imagine if this was real aspect, as opposed to something like, uh, you know, I'm going to be the Pokemon master kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Gil and Jaden, you sat through a couple episodes of all these shorts. Um, yep. Does this ranking make sense to you knowing the limited... Does this make... Does this ranking make sense to you with that knowledge in mind? Or is there something that you thought was, man, this is really good. And then you look at this and it's like ninth or something. I would probably, uh, I think the lowest one I would put really high is a uh, Hanabi Chan. Uh, I really liked Hanabi Chan. Yeah, Hanabi Chan was fun. Yeah. Uh, that probably be my second to be honest. It was like a regular Yonkoma kind of uh, uh, like comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty snappy. It's good. I really liked Onipan as well. It was fun, like a kids show. Um, I looked it up. Um, it's really interesting. It is uh, I forget the name of it, but it aired during a time slot, uh, like a children's programming block. And on that programming block, they often feature this. Uh, oh god, I gotta get the name of it up. Give me one moment, because it was uh, really important. But it was a programming block, and they often include. Um, one second. Where is it? My internet decides to work. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah, Ohasuta. Yeah, that's the name of the, the broadcasting block. And they have a, a, a thing called Oha Girls, which are girls that are between 12 and 15. And they're kind of like, you know, child stars. Most of them are child idols, right? And they usually form uh, different kinds of, like, idol groups, right? And so a lot of, like, teenagers who are looking to break out and becoming idols get their break on this show. And the three main girls, because remember, we were, we were watching them and, like, these, these, yeah. these just sound like girls. These just sound like like really they're young Japan- people. They're Japanese does not sound like typical anime characters. Yeah, yeah, right. And we looked at and I looked it up and they're all like 15 and they're all um titles they're all really they young. on the uh, <laughs> programming block that uh we were joined from it. And so it's all part of the, you know, the media package I guess to launch these careers. Um Yeah. But typically obviously young it's... girls in anime are well just women, like adult women, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe maybe pitching their shift, their you know, shifting their voice up, uh, yeah. or maybe not, right? But either way, they're still just adult women, right? With yeah. ex- years of experience. But these are not that. So this is not the case for Onipon. Yeah, and it gave it a it gave it a, a a certain quality, I guess, like a, a sort of roughness around the edges that I really liked. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was just fun. And uh, the fact, I mean, when I saw the title, I was like, okay, you know, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think it comes more from the idea that it's like pantsu in Japanese just means underpants. Like it's not just pa- yeah, pantsu. Oh yeah, pantsu can be a lot more uh, broad. Yeah, than a lot of people so, think of it. Yeah, it was closer. The use of the underpants in the show is closer to say something like Captain Underpants, where it's just like juvenile mm-hmm. more than uh, <laughs> you know lewd more than lewd. Yeah, <laughs> this is not um, a lewd show at all. Not we at were, all. Not at we all. We were kind yeah. of caught off guard by. It. We were like, oh, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, Hanabi Chan was very fun. That, that whole yeah. story is so interesting. I mean, I guess this is what you get in Wish for it series, right? You get these kind of like uh, more very different circumstantial, you know, outside of the typical anime production pipeline. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, well, because you, you get more, you get things that like, you know, with short, same thing with short films. You get like adaptations of properties that would like never, like Hanabi chan would not be made into a full uh, 22 minute, uh, you know, one core show, but mm -hmm. it suits very well for the length that it's at, right? Because, um, yeah, it's, it's a very particular niche, right? Um, which makes sense considering Hanabi chan is animated by Gaina. Yeah. Um, which is one of the many studios that have have their ancestry in Gainax. Mm. Which I have not seen any Gaina show play shows. Yeah. So that was a um, so, Yeah, first time. Yeah, so those were good. I would say there's one uh yeah, so I had I had two kind of bones to pick with the selection. Um the first one was Gumbare Doki Chan, that was more just because it was not really a series, and it was in 2021. The other was the the Animist shorts. Um, yeah, and it I was, was a more of a by that. thing. It was more of a thing of not to dissuade the quality of them because they're all very good, right? Like uh, that guy is great. Like he's clearly incredibly talented. They're all very funny. They're all really good. I wouldn't call them anime just because he's Japanese and he's doing animation. I don't think that automatically qualifies it for being anime. Um, and That's the fact that they're all like 30 min 30 second little videos that he does on YouTube and social media. Um, yeah, it, it didn't really sit right with the rest because the rest are all aired on television, right? Or, or at the very least were released on Blu-ray and were adjacent to like television programs. And that doesn't necessarily mean it all has to be on television. Of course but, it can be hmm. released on the internet, but just, I don't know, something about the, the feeling of like the, the animist stuff didn't really. Well, a few of these were, you know, not, released on television or blu-ray but like you know like the Pokemon shorts and uh and like a whole life error right but yeah. those feel a lot more in line within the anime industry than the yeah, anime yeah. shorts yeah um which kind of goes to just saying like uh i just per yeah personally didn't really feel like i was watching anime it was just like a a cool stop motion animation yeah you know? i I would. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to bat for for uh, for animus here, just real quick, uh, just to say. Mm. And I, I I totally understand the concerns that you're raising, and I I think it kind of it it gets to kind of where shorts as an overall like joint category kind of sits, kind of on, on the on the boundary of like what is and what isn't. And I, but I think it it kind of ties back into a lot of what we were highlighting back in short film with, you know, one of the appeals of shorts is that, you know, this is this is stuff where uh, you, you have a chance to really highlight, you know, kind of more independent productions. It's it's just a lot more achievable of a product. So, I mean, maybe because, no, I could totally see it from a yeah promotion kind of basis. Because yeah, I think yeah, more people yeah. should watch these. You know, like yeah, and, and maybe there's really an good. argument. Yeah. yeah, maybe there's an argument to be made that you know what should have you break up Annie Miss and you dump it over in short film i don't know like well no it, here so and and then it's this this is a this is maybe a circumstance where i should put on like the mod hat which you know i haven't done this okay. on stream so um, feel free to put out them i i am honored to be the one who made you put on the mod hat no I'm, I'm, it's I'm, just I'm, like I, this is a whole can of worms and i know how much we want to address of this but um i'm sure jag will be able to cut out <laughs> anything we don't want him post so <laughs> let's talk oh, let's God, talk about shelter. shelter let's go please let's not talk about shelter okay so historically oh. our anime has a very strict definition of what what is anime specific mm -hmm. right so we don't allow mention of vocaloids avatar the last airbender kind of anime adjacent properties right we, we don't allow discussion about live action adaptations and video games so you, you wouldn't be able to say like what do you guys think about fire emblem except, except right. you kind of would because there's like a there's like a small fire emblem anime but we don't tell anyone that exists so <laughs> Ruby, hmm. Ruby um, is anime now. <laughs> what shaft? What also? What is important is that we consider stop animation, stop animation, st stop motion animation, animation as opposed to something say like Thunderbolt Fantasy, which is very similar, but that's puppetry, and we don't consider it animation because that doesn't involve mm. like you know the act of animating mm. is like keyframes and all that, right? So, I, I think the animus shorts. Which just clicked in my head what they were when you guys were talking about that. It's like, you know, it, it's like um, the guy that uses the figmas, right? Like, yeah, 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 the little, yeah, the little yeah. figure, yeah, the, fi the figure yeah, animations. Yeah. 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 Well, so yeah, if, I just, if, mm. here's yeah, a question: I, it, if if uh, if these were drawn, if these were illustrated, exactly the same, except they're like drawn, 
that there's no question that's anime, right? Or is right. it the fact, that, or, or is it the fact that it's not like, is it the fact that they're like just little thirty second skits? Is that is that the more problem? Or is it, it felt, stopping emotion? I I think Jaden thought something similar, and it's not to like again, none of this is to to. to downplay the quality of these of these animations i think they're all great right he does a it does very complicated work with and stop motion is a very difficult animation style right oh, it's fucked yeah incredibly difficult um but something that kept kind of coming up we watched a few you know because they're very 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 short so we watched like a you know a decent chunk of them and it just kind of feels like a production reel kind of mm. like um like uh you know this is kind of like him showing what he's worked on, you know, uh, rather than what I would consider like, oh, I'm watching anime. If that makes sense. Yeah, so, and, and that's that's a completely yeah. fair point. Oh, so I can say, fair point. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, from from a jury perspective, we we don't decide what's eligible or not fair, as jurors, right. and yeah. mm-hmm. if it is if it is put forth as one of the eligible nominees. Our job is to evaluate it on its own merits, not whether That's we fair enough. think it should have been in there or not. And so we felt that, like, okay, you're just, once... you're just a jury, not a judge, jury, and executioner. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so what, what goes and what doesn't go is if right that if not if that is above our pay grade. Uh, right. And but yeah. I think fully. I even, even considering that, though, I think Gil's point is that even with that in mind, these are these aren't exactly like um what i guess they're very impressive on a technical level and you know somewhat on a writing level because you know a lot of them are very funny but uh when compared to something like pui pui mokar i don't know where i'm going with this well that's, that's what i was going to go into that pui because pui it, it, also stop motion and i it, don't think there's tough, any it's a tough yeah. thing right because the definition of anime is nebulous at best um the way I tend to think of anime is it's an industry, right? More than anything else. Like, it's not because some people think, oh, it has to come from Japan. No, it doesn't. It has to be this, this, that, or the other. Um, I think it's more safe that it's, it's, it's an industry in the same way that Bollywood is an industry, you know? Doesn't necessarily mean everything from Bollywood is exactly the same as every Bollywood movie, but it's an industry based in India, right? It's an industry based around this that produces this kind of thing, and there are things that are adjacent to it. So you could be really, really strict with it. Some people go as far to say that, oh, if it, the movies aren't anime, because anime is television, right? It's like limited animation on television. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Miyazaki wanted to call his films not anime. Yeah, yeah, he, what did he use? Uh, manga uh, Ega. Yeah, Manga Ega, yeah. Manga yeah, manga Ega. film. Yeah, or well, Doga Ega, yeah, that was another one too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so you have the really, really strict one, and then, you know, you have people who just, you know, think, oh, it's all, it's all anime. So we're not necessarily saying, we're not here to decide what is and isn't anime, because that's much too, much too complicated of a thing. I think it's, yeah, I think it was just, yeah, the fact that it's so short. Yeah. Another thing, too, is that um, they are all, it, because he's using figmas, right? Um. It's not licensed in any way. You know, like, the guy, he bought the figmas, but obviously he didn't pay to get the license. He didn't pay to get the license to use the Dragon Ball characters, right? Or the Dragon Ball, you know, thing. So he didn't pay to use the Yeah, DNA these are very stuff. self-published. Like These are self-published. Dojin, these right? are, yeah, Dojin works. These are, they're transformative, of course. I'm not saying that means they're bad. Again, like, I think it's great. And I think it's great we're in a position. I think it's, I may, I'm so happy, like, I'm really, because, I mean, even if he animated it, right? Even if he did, like, a fan animation, like, okay, sorry, that's not the right way to, even if he drew it, even if he drew it mm-hmm. and did, like, traditional uh, 2D animation, there is, especially with Toei, there's still the potential of, you know, the, you know, a takedown notice, right? Uh, like, breach of, uh, especially with Japan's wacky copyright laws in it, but I don't really think that's really possible with figments, I think that's stretching it far too much. Um, but I think because it is that separated thing where it's essentially fan content, in a way, it's it's really tough to judge, you know? Mm. It's like, you know, you got something like, obviously, again, going back to Hololive. Hololive is anime adjacent. Obviously, uh, Hololive era is in here. You know, uh, all the Martin videos, all everything like that, they're all in here. Um, but if there was a series, like a lot of people do Hololive fan animations, and a lot of them do them even in anime style. But would you count that as like a short series of anime? If they were whole live fan animations, 
Yeah. Hi, Wolf. Actually, one of the people who's like very active in pushing for shorts to be more inclusive and including more of it. And for me, the reason for that is that there isn't really a good line. Because, mm. for instance, in short mm -hmm. film, we have a lot of these, in the, again, independent movies. So we just went to the logic, okay, if we're going to be so open in short film and let anything that, you know, follows this definition of A, animated, B, of Japanese origin, then why shouldn't we do it for all the other categories? And, you know, deciding, for example, if it's from the industry is some way, but again, it's it's hard to then make the line. It's like, for example, Anilist allows animations that are made like student films or personal projects but only if that animator later went on to work in that industry and it's always so hard to track it and prove it so at some point mm -hmm. for the awards we just felt like it doesn't really matter does it really matter whether this student who made this amazing film that we think is great and want to showcase it later went on to work in the anime industry or with abroad or whatever else right. so that's why that's one of the reasons why we didn't really consider like the industry part. We actually wanted to encourage independent animation, fan animation, or like those industries that are kind of on the border of whether they are like businesses or or art, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. I think kind of the core the core issue the question is you know do you do you uh what what wh wh how can it, it's kind of hard to apply different yardsticks to short film short series, especially when you consider that they have kind of this legacy of being originally a combined category so you know again this is all above our pay grade and i am sure that the yeah, this is a can of worms I, I don't even necessarily will i don't even want to say be making it to the final product <laughs> okay fair enough but yeah no, it's, it's I, I don't mean to be i don't mean to be flippant or dismissive of course no 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 no, no, no it's fine it was a can we it's, it's an interesting discussion it was definitely uh, a can of worms yeah, yeah. I, it's a can of worms that i don't know that we necessarily want to be picking with the public <laughs> sure yeah, fair enough fair enough uh, what is Miss Kobayashi's Mini Dragon X? Uh, uh, it was more Kobayashi, basically. More Kobayashi, really? yeah. Just like, a, yeah. like another short version of an episode? It was like, uh, yeah, it would just be like, it felt a lot of them felt like not even necessarily scenes that were cut. They felt more like... Almost like, like very short credit, Yeah. Yeah. Well, like post-credit, or... like post-credit yeah. jokes, you know, like after the ED, omake, like, or the basically. next episode previous. Yeah, omake, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like a little, uh, a little thing that they would set at the end, well, and extra. it was basically. Which I mean, it, it says extra in the title. Yeah, e yeah, yeah, yeah. Extra. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched Kobayashi San after uh, the first season and like the very, very first special, which I think was the Onsen special. Um. So my perspective perspective is like, oh, it's just Kobayashi. I don't know if it has anything connection to like season two or anything like that, really. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of it's just more Kobayashi, which is you know, it's never a bad thing. No, it was good. Yeah. It was just, as, it, like they didn't skimp on the animation. It's still the same animation quality. Uh, yeah, the so. the picture that's presented here is <laughs> yeah, very misleading within the, the, the visuals of no, of the, the overall so, yeah, yeah series. It's. <laughs> It's just Kobayashi. It's just normal Kyoto animation, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, c I would honestly, personally, be a little bit more interested if it was this nightmare <laughs> the entire time. Yeah. Um, but I'm yeah, it's just, it's just all, more yeah. Kobayashi, you know? So the, the reason I bring it up is obviously, you know, it, it's the public winner. And I, I always find it interesting. I You know, I always want to give the public more of the benefit of the doubt because very often you can kind of do a kind of hand-wavy Oh, it's the only thing that they know. They they may not even have watched it. They just like Kobayashi and thought it deserved a vote. But you know, um, especially in the shorts category, like more of what you love is great. Like, why not enjoy that kind of thing? No, it's fine, um, especially when it's done well, such as Kobayashi and you know, Gambare Dokichan. Yeah. I mean, I'm never going to knock people liking things. Uh, no. People be, it, you know, if people if if. It, you should vote for what you like. I mean, that's oh, yeah, that's my uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know we. I mean, oh, that, that's that's the whole reason we have the jury is yeah. is is to have a a group of people who watch all of the things so that you know we can we can because that that's you know the the one flaw with a public vote is if we could make every public member sit down and watch every show, then we would not need the jury. Uh, yeah, but 
I, I, I don't know how that project is coming along. Uh, <laughs> I have a question, question for the for the jurors. Of course. Uh, why is uh, the god anime Kenda Master Ken not number one? <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, so by I far, mean, the one that surprised us the most was the Kenda Master uh, Ken. Ken we was, we were completely so. like baffled by. <laughs> Kendo but, Master, okay, story, story, funny story. Kendo, so I actually, when I pulled up Kendo Master, Kendama Master Ken, I was accident. I accidentally watched episode eight first. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh wait, I'm watching episode eight. Okay, this makes no sense. I'll just jump back in. At, I'll go, go back to uh, episode one and just start from the start. And that'll make more <laughs> sense. And it, it didn't. No, um, it's a wild ride. It makes as much sense that way. It, uh, Kendama Master Ken is... One of the shows of all time, oh, certainly. Uh, it has kind of like, uh, has kind of like, you know, like, um, not Samurai Cop. That's the movie. Uh, what's Samurai the Cop? Name? It, no, that, that, that was definitely Ninja compared Slayer. to Ninja that Rob Ninja Ninja Slayer. Yeah, like early Ninja trigger Ninja. works, early trigger works, even like, no, the, I think like, pop team epic if they had less budget. Yeah, um, I think if you, mm. if you want a serious answer, I think the, 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 the issue with, Kendama Master Ken is kind of length. Because, you know, the, the... Kendama Master Ken is a show where the show itself is the punchline. And it's yeah. a, it is a, for a lot of the jurors, it was a really funny punchline, you know, at the gate. Mm. Uh, but Kendama Master Ken is 10, 12 minute shorts. And over the span, it, it's a really funny joke initially. It is kind of the same joke right. throughout the show. And that's so, fair enough. Yeah, to, to stre- I, that's stretching why that over I would two not... hours, and not yeah. so much. I, 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 I don't I think, think I would watch the... any more episodes of it. To be yeah, honest. we only watched the one episode, and it was what? a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I can I can understand if you just watch ten of the same thing, it would kind of start to get. But me what if it's that thing where like you do it and it's funny, and you do it again and it's not funny, and then you do it ten more times and it becomes funny? And <laughs> oh, it becomes funny again. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I guess my I perspective, mean, like I, for example, we mentioned Pop Team Epic. I didn't really like Pop Team Epic, uh, which is a little controversial because a lot of people thought it was like the funniest thing ever. But like to me, the the joke got old. You know, like the the same sort of bits got old, and I, I probably would probably feel similar to Kendama Master Ken in terms of in, that, in regard. Because one episode, holy shit, that was an experience. But like uh, <laughs> ten episodes, yeah. I don't know. It's just okay. the ED, man. That was... Um, the dance, <laughs> man. Was oh, the dance. <laughs> <laughs> and the multi, oh, so multi-layering of different, like, media types. <laughs> it's very yeah, multimedia. It, yeah, it, it, it's, like, it's definitely, like... But but then you, the joke is kind of the production. And oh, you, it, Kendama Master Ken showed its entire hand in the first episode. It, yeah, it, it, well, it, it looked exactly what... And that honesty, we loved. We loved how it was just absolutely unabashed about it what bonkers, it was, yeah. what it was here to yeah. do. Uh, it was here to be stupid and fun, and it did that. Um, but it, it's just a question of being able to sustain that and without really being able to rework the formula at all, it, it does get a little stale. Uh, of course... He, Everybody, all the, all your public members, go watch Ken Dama Master Ken. It is the greatest uh, piece of media <laughs> ever created. Uh, but well, we looked up the the director's YouTube channel, and it's full of the exact same kind of stuff. So it's just his shtick, I guess. Um, oh, that's kind of cute. He like made it. Yeah, but that's like that the thing of serious. like uh, I think the the, the greatest oh, thing. Yeah, that stuff was definitely very similar. It's, it's just very style. similar. Yeah. Yeah, I think the thing that's just uh, the most fascinating thing about Ken the Master Ken is that it actually aired on television. <laughs> Did it actually? Uh, yeah, I, I actually have... aired on television. Imagine, I, have... I cannot imagine I have... sitting I have down on TV question. being like, fl- it's just flipping through channels being like, oh, what should I watch? And you just get assaulted in the eyes by Kendama Master Ken. Well, it's it kind is... of was the same on... thing. As, like, uh, yeah, it was aired on television, I'm pretty sure. Mal says it is anyway. But I know it was... Um... I, an interesting thing was that uh, High Dive, which is Sentai Filmworks, um, you know, streaming service, right? Uh, they just completely bought the license for it and completely supported it, which I think is very interesting in terms of like, oh, they they want this. <laughs> like, oh my god, this is. I mean, would you not? We if, if you were a TV this. executive, would you not yeah. want Kendama Master Ken oh, in your back pocket? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. I mean, you got it. A rainy day. <laughs> 
Okay. Not on a rainy, on a sunny day. <laughs> Enough about <laughs> no one else we can. I keep uh, getting no. the name wrong, like Ines. Okay. One last question for the jurors. Uh, it, it is, is I, I was I tried to ask this like ten minutes ago, so I, I, this is just a throw in. Um, oh boy. No, it's very simple. So, uh, in in this category, it's very rare that we get something like a sequel. But Pui Pui Mokar is a sequel to an actually much beloved jury show, also called Pui Pui Mokar. I mean, this this time they're in driving school. I, I don't know if it's a proper sequel or a spinoff. But um, did did you um how how has the series evolved? If at all, from the from the first iteration, and did you was that a, a factor in where it ranked? Okay, so it definitely took a different direction. The first was so not an anthology in that it was you know had different directors or whatever, but it kind of almost you know each little episode. It's like a collection of different scenarios based around yes. the cars. Yes, and so it picked different genres and famous movie moments and other things like that. And this season, Pui Pui Mokar Driving School is a singular focused plot, essentially. Now, the Mokars being Mokars, they don't always willingly comply with that plot. I but... plot, of, plot, of, plot of a generous word for it, but... Uh... Not, not that that's an issue. I'm just, but yeah, but now, I, I, it's it, more. Like, I, I, I think it is definitely. It, it was definitely sort of a. We're going to introduce this kind of unifying concept, and that's good. And I think it worked to a degree to sort of keep the formula fresh. Because, because that's the thing. You, you don't just want to be like, okay, more the Molkar is already out the gate. Is kind of a thing where it's it's, it's very loosely tied together. So. It's 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 easy to kind of be like, okay, what are we gonna we're, we're gonna send the mole cars to the beach? Uh, we're gonna have them go look at sharks. We're gonna we're gonna put the mole cars on the moon. So, I mean, it, so they they didn't. I think that was one of the benefits is that they 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 introduced this new thing, but they didn't let them limit it. I didn't mean to cut you off, my I am so sorry. But um, so like there's the, the moon. There's the episode where the mole cars go to the moon. So, I think it definitely uh, it, it mm. managed to introduce uh. A new thing, but it didn't let that new thing uh, suffocate the creativity that it was carrying over from the first, uh, the the original series. All right, that's great to hear. I mean, I I felt obligated to talk about Molcar because I went to a convention and I saw a Molcar in sale. It was like it was like you know a Molcar, but it was like seventy dollars. I was like, I, I can't do this. And then <laughs> I went to another convention recently, and I was able to haggle down a Molcar. That had I'm a so hole glad in that it. you finally got your mole car. I'm, well, I'm so I was so confused because I I thought it was like a slipper because it had it has like a hole in it. But then I I <laughs> got home and I googled the the Japanese on it and it's a tissue holder. So now I have a tissue holder. That shit. Oh. Like a ah, car. okay. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of my that's most. Like, valuable I mean, that's conditions. a classic gag, right? Like shoes, tissue holders, you know, tissue boxes as. as a as shoes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> as, yeah, yeah. as shoes. I mean, we, yeah, all, we've gag. all heard that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what we've also heard is of Gil is uh, Gil lies here and the Cine Clinic. This entire uh, two segments. Uh, I, I want to thank you all so much for coming and uh, and having fun with us. Thank you so hey, much no, for joining us. us. It's it's always a pleasure to have uh, our illustrious guests here at the R slash Anime Awards. Yeah. Thank you guys. Of course. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Fun. It's fun. You can catch Jaden or the Cine mm-hmm. Clinic at YouTube.com at the Cine Clinic. Uh, Jaden is actually a uh, past our anime winner of our writing essay and video contest. Huh? Um, the, oh, right. Yeah. Right. The one of, <laughs> oh, he, he, okay. <laughs> let's go to show that, how much, yeah. how important we are. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but, no. Cause it was like, like four years ago or something. Yeah. Sorry. It was quite a while <laughs> like, ago. No, that was the, uh, that was the, uh, the, the Dragon Ball, the Dead Zone mm-hmm. video. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, and and just in general, Jaden makes some amazing content. I, I remember a, a while back he, or they released a video, um, called the Anime Analysis Starter Pack, where it kind of oh, gives yeah. you the tools in order to start getting into talking more about anime and uh, and the like. Also, Gil, it kind of uh, makes short films himself, if you can call <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in, some of them are, are quite the trip. Um, highly recommended. Thank you. You know they're both they're both featured in this YouTube video from Pause and Select called Specters of Anitube, which is a kind of a good introduction. So I, I highly encourage you to watch that as well.
Oh yeah, I also yeah, was, that's I right. was I was bronze in that right in that contest too. Oh was hey, place. yeah. Yeah. My majority days video was third. Got beat up by Koi oh, Nakachi right. video. See, we got the dream team. Right. That's right. All right, but uh, again, thank you guys for coming by, and uh, we're gonna move on to the next category. See ya. Thank you. See ya. Oh.